G'day, Robbo from uh, Cobb Co. Wood Turning again. This video is about lathe maintenance. Now most people seem to think that if you blow all the sawdust off and wipe it off, that that's all the maintenance that they need. But the lathe is a machine like a car, and you have your car regularly serviced, or you should do, so a lathe needs regular servicing as well, depending on how much you use it. Now the first thing you need is a blower, or compressed air or something like that, or a good soft brush, so that you can brush all the sawdust and everything out of the way. Next thing I find handy is a file for dressing the uh, tool rests, a wire brush, I'll show you what that's for in a minute, some sandpaper, a green scouring cloth, a heap of cloths, some solvent, thinners, kerosene, whatever, a lubricant, we use inox around here, and another handy jigger is a taper mate, which is a plastic thing like this, um, it's available from a couple of places in Australia now, it's a number two Morse taper, and I'll show you what that's for in a minute, and for all you hunters out there that use rifles, a pull through is a handy jigger to have. So that's the equipment. Now we'll get on to it. This lathe has been in storage for 12 months outside, oh well, not outside but under cover, in an open area. Now we live about four or five hundred metres from the sea and as you can see it's got a little bit of surface rust down along the, the bed there. But, and that was oiled as well. But even after 12 months or so, it uh, still gets a little bit of surface rust. Now things will stick on that, which isn't good. Um, anything that doesn't move freely is bad. It's like having a blunt chisel. You've got to force it in. And of course, everybody switches off the lathe to move the tool rest or the banjo. And if you've got to force it, generally you run it into the work that you're trying to do and ruin it. So the first thing I generally do is dress the tool rest. Now my tool rest get dressed fairly often because I get nicks and things in them but for the purpose of this exercise we're going to do it now. Now using a file you do what's called draw filing. You have the the file at 45 degrees there and just run it along the face where it's on its working surface is there like this. Now, after you've done that, don't rub your fingers along there because there could be little metal shards hanging out and a metal splinter in the end of your finger. You'll feel it, you won't find it, but you'll feel it for days. Last thing I do, get a bit of sandpaper and polish the rest up. Now, it's not just this surface here that he's doing, it's down here as well where your fingers slide. So make sure that's nice and clean and shiny. And then using a cloth or a paper towel, just wipe that off, like that. Right, now that's done. The next thing that we do is we remove the tail stock. Sit it out of the way. and the banjo as well. Slide them off. Now using your solvent, as I said, so we use thinners around here because, well, we just have it, that's all. Perps, kerosene, anything will do. Saturate a cloth. Give the bed a good wipe down to get rid of any residual finishes or anything like that. 
Sometimes you have to resort to a scraper if you're using CA glue or finishes. Now, it's important when you do this that you also clean down underneath the bed where the locks for your um, tail stock and banjo lock in. Because what happens is if you're turning green wood or anything like that, you get sap and stuff underneath there and they can stick. So clean them right down as well. Now if you have a little bit of rust on there, try a scouring pad first. Also put a little bit of thinners on that. You'll find in most cases that with surface rust, a scouring pad will remove most of it. If you have a really big build up, then you have to resort to sandpaper, but don't get too vicious with it. Make sure you clean this all off, like that. Now it's starting to look pretty. Now occasionally you get a big rust spot like that. Then you use a bit of sandpaper on it. You just gently take it off. That's 120 grit. Don't go any lower than that, it's like with a scratch hell out of the bed. Again, use the scouring pad to go down the inside there because the tail stock slides along the inside of these rails here. And if there's any build up of garbage, it tends to get stuck. Now, when you're using those plots that are soaked in thinners and that, don't throw them in a bin altogether. I chuck them out on the ground and let them dry out first before I dispose of them. You can get a thing called uh, spontaneous combustion, which has burnt down a few workshops over the years. The build up of uh, finishing cloths and cloth with thinners. Right, now the bed's nice and clean now. Now the next thing that needs doing Funnily enough, is the tails, is the banjo. Now these parts here get gummed up with garbage occasionally, so it pays to give them a good wipe out. But the most important part is getting this face, this face here clean, and also the lockdown thing, so you can get stuff caught in underneath here. So, again, another cloth. Bit of thinners. Give this a good wipe around here. So it looks nice and pretty. Give the underneath of the locks a good wipe as well. and give the bar, or the lockdown mechanism, a bit of a wipe too, clean it all off. Rotate it round so you get the whole thing. Don't chuck that down on the ground, out of the way. Now using a lubricant. Now WD-40 is not a lubricant. It's a water displacement thing and it will not stick. A little bit of oil on these, or as I say, we use inox in Australia. Just give that a light spray. Give the underneath a light spray. Good 
rotate it round, slide this up and down so that it slides nice and freely. And then fit it back onto the lathe. This handle should lock at about 7 or 8 o'clock that way, 4 or 5 o'clock that way. Some of the smaller lathes, the actual lockdown bar on uh, cam locks bend, so you've got to make sure you get it in the right place. Now's the time to adjust it. If you need to adjust it, there's a little nut in underneath here, and you just tighten it up to get it a little bit firmer. Now, once I've got that on, spray the, spray the lathe down with inox, the bed, Then I'll run the, tiles, the banjo just up and down it and across it to make sure that all the cam locks and everything are working nice and neatly. Now, if this lathe was going into storage, I would leave that layer of oil on it. But, because it's going to be used, I'll wipe any excess oil off the bed. Sawdust soon takes, rest, takes the rest of it off. So, next one is the tile stock. Now, this is the little plate I'm talking about there before. There's your adjusting nut there to raise and lower the locks on it. So, we'll clean that off now. Again, getting in underneath here to clean it right off properly. It's amazing how much garbage gets under there actually. Right, all nice and clean. Going cloth down on the floor. As you can see, you go through a few cloths doing this. I find that cloths do a better job than paper towels. Again, make sure that you lubricate this lockdown shaft in here so that everything moves nice and easily. And fit the tail stock up. Make sure it slides nice and easily too. Now the handle on the tail stock, as you can see this one's not fitted properly, so we have to adjust it. Right. Now that should lock at about 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Either, either that way or back this way. That's almost standing at 12 o'clock, which is too high. I like them to lock about on that side, 10 or 11 o'clock. On the other side, one or two o'clock. That gives the most mechanical advantage. So we'll just adjust up this nut a little bit more. Fortunately, most of them are fitted with nylock so they don't move. This one's a free one. Fraction too far. Back it off a bit. And there we have it. Right. Make sure it locks in. At this point, it pays to check your spindle lock here to make sure it's functioning okay. Another thing is that on the keeper plate here that stops the core from sliding in and out when you operate the hand wheel, Get a little bit of lubricant down in there as well. Doesn't need much normally. Again, just wipe off any excess. Rotate the handle a few times. 
Make sure the oil works its way down in there. Make sure the quill's nice and clean here as well. And the threads there are nice and clean. So that's ready to use now. Now we go up the other end of the load. Now this is the same procedure for the tail stock quill and the headstock quill. Get your little green paper mate here, put it in the thread, give it a few twists, pull out any garbage. The same applies for the tail stock quill. Now, using our pull, our pull through, put a little bit of thinners on that, plug it down the hole. pull it through. Now that's the amount of garbage that came out of the, the inside of the quill. If you turn bowls all the time and you go to put a Morse taper in there with your dry fur and everything, if this stuff's stuck inside there it will make the dry fur run out and it gets worse and worse and worse because you compact it and it builds up on the thing. The worst thing you can do is put sandpaper in there. If it's that dirty Get the green pad, again saturated in thinners, and put it up in there and just twist it round and round. I've seen a lot of damage done to the Morse tapers because people get really coarse sandpaper in the, up in there, or worse still a screwdriver or something, and they actually score the inside of the, the Morse and then wonder why it doesn't hold on properly. Now the other thing that you need to do up there is check the threads on this are filthy at the moment. So using a wire brush, just turn the lathe on, clean them out. Also, make sure that this face here, your register on the, the nose there, is nice and smooth and has no nicks or anything in it because that's what makes everything run straight. The next thing you do while you're up here is check your belts and everything and your speeds and make sure there's no cracks or anything on the pulleys. And you're just about right to go. Now you should have a lathe that everything slides nice and easily on without any problems. You can also check the leads and everything and make sure that they're all right. On the variable speed lathes, they have a lot of trouble with the switch gear getting dust into them. And I've found the easiest way is with an air compressor. <coughs> make sure the load is switched off. Take the cover off and keep nudging the stop button. It's the one that causes the most problem and keep air blowing into it because it gets dust inside there and the contacts don't contact properly, particularly on magnetic switches. All right, so that just about covers all the lathe maintenance. Now you should have a machine that will run for years and years and years and be a pleasure to use. Thank you.